Uh, good morning, everybody. สวัสดีครับ Welcome to Thailand. <coughs> Now, when I was a young man 40 years ago, the country was very, very poor, with lots and lots and lots of people living in poverty. We decided to do something about it, but we didn't begin with a welfare program or a poverty reduction program. But we began with a family planning program, following a very successful maternal child health activity sets of activities. So basically, no one would accept family planning if their children didn't survive. So the first step: get to the children, get to the mothers, and then follow up with family planning. Not just child mortality alone. You need also family planning. Now let me take you back as to why we needed to do it. In my country, that was the case in 1974. Seven children for family, tremendous growth at 3.3 percent. There was just no future. We needed to reduce the poverty and growth rate. So, we said, let's do it. The women said, we agree. We'll use pills, but we needed doctors to prescribe the pills, and we had very, very few doctors. So we didn't take no as an answer. We took no as a question. So we went to the nurses and the midwives, who were also women, and did a fantastic job. At explaining how to use the pill, that was wonderful, but it covered only 20% of the country. What do we do for the other 80%? Leave them alone and say, "Well, they're not medical personnel." No, we decided to do a bit more. So we went to the ordinary people that you saw. Actually, below that yellow sign, I wish they hadn't wiped it out because there was Coca-Cola there. <laughs> we were so much bigger than Coca-Cola in those days. And no difference. The people they chose were the people we chose. They were well known in the community. They knew that customers were always right, and they were terrific. And they practiced the family planning themselves, so they could supply pills and condoms throughout the country in every village of the country. So there we are. We went to the people who were seen as the cause of the problem to be the solution. So that was the step we went. So wherever there were people, and you can see most of the women selling things. Here's the floating market selling. Bananas and crabs, and also contraceptives. Wherever you find people, you will find contraceptives in Thailand. And then we decided, why not get to religion? Because in in the Philippines, the Catholic Church was pretty strong, and Thai, Thai people were Buddhists. So we went to them, and they said, "Look, uh, could you help us?" So I'm there, the one in blue, not the yellow, holding a bowl of <laughs> of holy water for the monk to sprinkle holy water on pills and condoms for the sanctity of the family. And this picture was sent throughout the country. So some of the monks in the villages were doing the same thing themselves, and the women were saying, "No wonder we have no side effects. It's been blessed." <laughs> That was their perception. And then we went to teachers. You need you need everybody to be involved in trying to provide whatever it is that makes humanity a, a better place. So we went to the teachers. Over a quarter of a million. We're told about family planning with new alphabet A, B for birth, C for condom, I for IUD, V for vasectomy, and then we had a snakes and ladders game where you throw dice. If you land on anything pro-family planning, you move ahead. Like mother takes the pill every night. Good, very good mother, move ahead. <laughs> uncle buys condom. Very good uncle, move ahead. Uncle gets drunk, doesn't use condom. Come back, start again. <laughs> again, edutainment, education plus entertainment. And the kids were doing it in schools too. We had relay races with condoms. We had children's condom blowing championship. And before long, the condom was known as the girl's best friend. In Thailand, for poor people, diamonds don't make it. So the condom <laughs> is the girl's best friend. We introduced our first microcredit program in 1975, and the women who organized it said, "We only want to lend to women who practice family planning. If you're pregnant, take care of your pregnancy. If you're not pregnant," You can take a loan out from us, and that was run by them. And after 30, 35, 36 years, it's still going on. It's part of the Village Development Bank. It's not a real bank, but it's a fund, microcredit. And we didn't need a big organization to run it. It was run by the villagers themselves. And you probably hardly seen a Thai man there. It's always women, 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 women. And then we thought we'd help America because America has been helping everyone, whether they want help or not. <coughs> And this is on the 4th of July. We decided to provide vasectomy to all men, but in particular American men, to the front of the queue, right opposite, <laughs> right opposite the ambas ambassador's residence, uh, during his van der Neu. And the hotel, gave, the hotel gave us the ballroom for it, very appropriate room. <laughs> yeah. 
And since it was near lunchtime, they said, all right, we'll give you some lunch. Of course, it must be American cola. You've got two brands, Coke and Pepsi. And then the food, it's either hamburger or hot dog. And I thought a hot dog would be more symbolic. <laughs> <laughs> and, and here is this then young man called Willie Bohm, who worked for USAID. Obviously, he's had his vasectomy because his hot dog is half eaten. <laughs> and he was very happy. It made a lot of news in America. And it angered some people also. I said, don't worry, come over. I'll do the whole lot of you. <laughs> and what happened? And all this thing, from seven children to 1.5 children. Population growth rate of 3.3 to 0 0.5. You could call it the Coca-Cola approach, if you like. It was exactly the, exactly the same thing. I'm not sure whether Coca-Cola followed us or we followed Coca-Cola, but we're good friends. And so that's the case of everyone joining in. We ha didn't have a strong government. We didn't have lots of doctors. But it's everybody's job who can change attitude and behavior. Then AIDS came along and hit Thailand. And we had to stop doing a lot of good things to fight AIDS. But unfortunately, the government was in denial, denial, denial. So our, effect, our work wasn't effective. So I thought, well, if you can't go to the government, go to the military. So I went to the military and asked to borrow 300 radio stations. They have more than the government. And they've got more guns than the government. So I asked them, could they help us in our fight against HIV? And after I gave them statistics, they said, yes, OK. You can use all the radio stations, television stations. And that's when we went on to the airwaves. And then we had a new prime minister soon after that. And uh, he said, Michai, could you come and join? He asked me in because he liked my wife a lot. So I said, OK. <laughs> it's a little bit like Bill. <laughs> we'll have Melinda. I don't know where he's going to be. And so that he knew my wife. And he said, could you come and join? And I went in and took care of the things that, that, that you've already heard. And he became the chairman of the National AIDS Committee and increased the budget 54. Every ministry, even judges, had to be involved in AIDS education. Everyone. And we said the public uh, institutions, religious institutions, schools, everyone was involved. And here, every media person had to be trained for HIV. And we gave every station half a minute extra for advertising to earn more money. So they were happy with that. And then AIDS education in all schools, starting from university. And these are high school kids teaching high school kids. And the best teachers were the women, the girls, not the boys. And they were terrific. And these girls who go around teaching about safe sex and HIV were known as Mother Teresa. And then we went down one more step. These are primary school kids. Uh, third, fourth grade, going to every household in the village, every household in the whole of Thailand, giving AIDS information and a condom to every household given by these young kids. And no parents objected because we were saved, trying to save lives, and this was a lifesaver. <clears throat> and we said everyone needs to be involved, so you have the companies also realizing that dead staff, uh, sick cust staff don't work and dead customers don't buy, so they're all trained. And then we had this. Captain Condom with his Harvard MBA, going to schools and nice spots. And they loved him. You need a symbol of something. You know, in every country, every program, you need a symbol. And he's, this is probably the best thing he's ever done with his MBA. <laughs> <laughs> and then we gave condoms up everywhere in the streets, everywhere, everywhere. In, in taxis, you get condoms. And also, in uh, traffic, the policemen give you uh, uh, condoms, our cops and rubbers program. <laughs> so can you imagine New York policemen giving out condoms? <laughs> of course I can, and they'd enjoy it immensely. I see them standing around right now, everywhere. Imagine if they had condoms, they're giving out to all sorts of people. And then, you know, new change. We had hairband, uh, clothing, and the condom for your mobile phone during the rainy season. Uh, and these were the condoms that we uh, introduced. Uh, one says... Weapon of mass protection, we found, you know, somebody here was searching for the weapon of mass destruction, but well, we have found the weapon of mass protection, the condom. And then it says here with the American flag, don't leave home without it. <laughs> but I have some to give out afterwards, but let me warn you, these are tie size, so be very careful. <laughs> and so, so you, can sue, you can see that condoms can, condoms can do so many things. Look at this. I gave this to El Gore and to Bill Senior also, stop global warming, use condoms. <laughs> and then this is the picture that I mentioned to you, that the weapon of mass protection. 
and let the next Olympics save some lives. Why just run around? And then, <laughs> and then finally, in Thailand, we're Buddhists, we don't have a god, so instead we say, in rubber we trust. <laughs> so you can see that we added everything to our endeavor to make life better for the people. We had condoms in all the refrigerators, in the hotels, in the schools, because alcohol impairs judgment. And then what happened? After all this time, everybody joined in. According to the UN, it declined by new cases of HIV, declined by 90%. And according to the World Bank, 7.7 .7 million lives were saved. Otherwise, there wouldn't be many types walking around today. So it just showed you, you could do something about it. 90% of the funding came from Thailand. There was political commitment, some financial commitment, and everybody joined in the fight. So just don't leave it to the specialists, the doctors and nurses. We all need to help. And then we decided to help people out of poverty now that we got AIDS somewhat out of the way. This time, not with government alone, but in cooperation with the business community. Because poor people are business people who lack business skills and access to credit. Those are the things to be provided by the business community. We're trying to turn them into barefoot entrepreneurs, little business people. The only way out of poverty is through business enterprise. So that was done. So the money goes from the company into the village via tree planting. So it's not a free gift. They plant the trees, and the money goes into their microcredit fund, which we call the Village Development Bank. Everybody joins in, and they feel they own the bank because they brought the money in. And before that, you can borrow the money. You need to be trained. And we believe if you want to help the poor, those who are living in poverty, access to credit must be a human right. Access to credit must be a human right. Otherwise, they'll never get out of poverty. And then before, before getting a loan, you must be trained. Here's a, uh, what we call a barefoot MBA, uh, teaching people how to do business so that when they borrow money, they'll, su they'll succeed with the business. So these are some of the business, mushrooms, crabs, uh, vegetables, trees, fruits, vegetables. And this is very interesting, Nike ice cream and Nike biscuits. The villagers, this is a village sponsored by Nike. They said, they should stop making shoes and clothes, make these better because we can afford them. And then we have silk, Thai silk. Now we're making Scottish tartans, as you can see on the left, to sell to all people of Scottish ancestors. Uh, so anyone sitting in and watching TV, get in touch with me. <laughs> and then this is our answer to Starbucks in Thailand. <laughs> Coffee and condoms. See, Starbucks keeps you awake. We keep you awake and alive. That's the difference. Can you imagine at every Starbucks that you can also get condoms? So you can order your condoms with your cappuccino. And then now, finally, in education, we want to change the school as being underutilized into a place where it's a lifelong learning center for everyone. We call this our school-based integrated uh, uh, rural development. And it's a center, a focal point for economic and social development. So redo the school. Make it serve the community needs. And here is a bamboo building. All of them are bamboo. This is a geodesic dome made of bamboo. And I'm sure Buckminster Fuller would, would be very, very proud to see a bamboo geodesic dome. And we use vegetables around the school ground, so they raise their own vegetables. And then finally, I firmly believe if we want the MDGs to work, the Millennium, Millennium Development Goals, we need to add family planning to it. Of course, child mortality first, and then family planning. Everyone needs family planning service. It's underutilized. So we have now found the weapon of mass protection. And we also ask the next Olympics to be involved in saving lives. And then finally, that is our, our network. And these are our Thai tulips. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>